told the story on it. One of the, uh, guy, the, one, the person that wrote that song was praying for a couple that their baby was in the high sea oh. dying. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. And as through the middle of the night, they were giving up hope on this child being alive and making it through the night. And as he was praying, these words started coming of the song that just was released in this room. That baby did survive. Yes. There was victory in the middle of the storm. Yes. So just yes. God is good. He's still yes. good, and He's working here in that same way. Yes. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We have to be ready for anything. Yes. Yes. And I don't know what we expect when we declared Operation Chaos. <laughs> and I don't know what I expected when I'm. Uh, I had to contend for the word because I have a message about contending for the word. Yeah. How many of you know when you give a word, you have to live the word? Yes. <laughs> so as I stand before you, there's not much of me left. <laughs> so right now, Father, we just ask. <sighs> Holy Spirit, speak. Speak the word that you have prepared, the word that you have established for this day. We come because we are hungry and we are thirsty for you for the things of your kingdom, Lord. We want to see your kingdom established. We want to see the darkness flee as your light. The light of your kingdom fills this earth, that the glory of the Lord will fill this earth. So speak. Open our eyes. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear as your spirit gives utterance this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So the Lord's been talking to me about how important it is to understand the times in which we live. We are in a new season, and we must have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says in this season. So what do we know about where we are right now in this season? Well, we're in the year 2021 in the Gregorian calendar, which is what we use in the West. 20 means wait, waiting and expectancy. So we're in the, the century of waiting expectantly and the year of 21 is the year of the manifest spirit the manifest spirit we are in the dispensation of grace in the sixth age of the seven dispensations the first was innocence adam under probation prior to the fall of man conscious from the fall to the great flood human government from the great flood to the dispersion at the tower of babel the fourth was the promise from Abraham to Moses. The law was the fifth from Moses to the crucifixion of Jesus. And the sixth is grace from the cross to the rapture of the church. Yes. That leaves just one left, the millennial reign of Christ. Yes. In our Western world, we don't know much about the Hebrew calendar. I've been drawn. I'm trying to learn Hebrew. I'm being drawn. Our, our God is Jewish. And I want to know everything I can about him, which means understanding his culture and his language and, and the things that are important to him in his daily life. The Hebrew calendar is a lunar calendar with 29 and a half days, which doesn't work, and a normal calendar. So some months have 29 days, some months have 30, but it also is a solar calendar. So they have this weird way of adding a leap month instead of a leap day. We have a leap day every four years. The Jewish calendar, the Hebrew calendar, has a leap month every seven years. I don't know they have a way to do it, to line up. The first of every Hebrew month is always a new moon. And the 15th of every Hebrew month is a full moon. And so we are in the Hebrew year of 5782. Five is the grace of God, seven is the spirit of God, eight is new beginnings, and two is a faithful witness and being set apart. Today, right now, is the 17th day of the month of Tammuz. 17 means overcoming victory. Tammuz means the sprout of life. I receive that in Jesus' name. To me, that's fascinating because it was Friday at Eastern Gate House of Prayer that the word of the Lord came for us stating that we were commencing a new battle plan. Mm -hmm. I asked Michael, it was just kind of a weird service, but we, just, we were just having some church. I said, Michael, what happens in the army before they go into battle? 
He said the general outlines the plan of execution for the battle to come. So we said, Lord, what's your plan of execution for the battle to come? I felt that we were to, we had four shofars in the church. I blow them to the four corners of the earth. And it was chaos in here. And that is, when, and that is how battle happened. That's how, they, that's how they took the promised land. It's, it's the chaos that God created with the, with the worship and the, and the instruments and the marching and the priests. It wasn't, wasn't always the sword that won the battle. It was the chaos because they confused the enemy. So we asked the Lord to declare his plan of execution for the battle before us. And immediately we're reminded that we do not battle against flesh and blood. People are not our enemies. It is. Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. We do not war with people. Oh, that is so... Mm, 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 mm. We do not war with people. Everything... The war that we wage is in the spirit. Yes. We are in the midst of the epic battle of the ages between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness yes. on this earth yes. for God's people. It is on this earth that we wage war. Yes. And Satan has had his time to rule and to reign, but no more. Christ has given us the victory. Yes. Romans 8.37 Romans 8.37. Yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. And I think I have the Amplified Bible up, just so you know. Sorry, tricking you. I was reading, Tim was reading from the Amplified, so it's still in the Amplified version. We have all the versions now. Yay, free upgrades. <laughs> yeah, King James, please. King, yes, King James, thank you. Excuse my words. Romans 12.21. Romans 12, 21 says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Yes. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. I have a whole bunch of scriptures. We need to be reminded of the victory that Christ yes. purchased for us. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't battle death. We don't battle sin. We don't battle the grave. Our enemy is religion. Our enemy is darkness. Our enemy is the lies, the deception, the shame, the guilt. Yes. 2 Corinthians 2.14. 2 Corinthians 2.14. I'm in battle mode. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Sometimes, once in a while, always causes us to triumph. Where? Where? It's a place. In. Every time we see the word in, it's a place that we have to put ourselves. We have to put our minds, we have to put our hearts, we have to put our mouths in the place of Christ. In Christ. It's a place that we go to. Anywhere. We can do it. We can go to that place anytime, anywhere. And make it manifest. Manifest. Open, out in the open, in this world for all to see, making manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Yes. Oh, I'm going to write that on a t-shirt. I'm going to write it on, in, on my mirror and lipstick. Yes. Every always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge yes. by us in every place. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 2.15. Oh, the enemy's angry. Oh, he's angry. We need to pray before we leave today because he's angry and we're poking the bear. Yeah. 
But you know what? He's a defeated foe. Second, uh, Colossians 2.15. And having spoiled principalities and powers. Who do we war against? We war against principalities and powers. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Manifest, manifest spirit. Made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In it, his finished work. His victory, his finished work. He has finished the victory. 1 John 4, 4. 1 John 4, 4. It's not about us. It's got nothing to do with who we are. All God wants of us is to say yes. All our part is, is to say yes. God does everything else. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'll be a little child. I'll be a little child because when daddy says to do it, I just do it. It doesn't occur to me not to do it because I trust my daddy and there's no thought of fear. There's no thought of doubt. So be his little children. 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Anything born of God shall overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith. You're right, Don. Will will Jesus find faith? Faith to just say yes. Faith to just do when he says to do something foolish that seems like foolishness. Do we just do it? Do we open the door, Tammy? We opened the door Friday night, and we blew all four shofars out the door. From the throne of the north to the south releasing the river out of this out of this church into the city the dogs were barking in the neighborhood people were probably driving by going what is that sound we're not professional shofar blowers but when god says to do something we do it because it means something in the spirit the world may not understand but the spirit comprehends and it accomplishes things it changes things revelation 15 2 revelation chapter 15 verse 2 And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, glass, having the harps of God. There is a special blessing for those that overcome. Everybody who wants to can overcome. By the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 17, 14. Talk about the fire. I'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, yes. and they that are with him are called the chosen, are called, are called and chosen and faithful. Called and chosen and faithful. Faithful to say yes. yes. Faithful to say yes. yes. Faithful to say yes, Lord. All we have to do is say yes. So we blew the shofars to the four corners of the earth and declared Operation Chaos commence. Church, the revival to come won't be like anything we've ever seen or experienced on this earth before. And it's going to be chaotic. It's going to be loud. It's going to be uncomfortable. But it's going to be glorious. And it may not happen in the churches. It may, I see city parks, I see stadiums that we're thinking we're building for football teams and baseball teams, but they're for the glory of God because there aren't churches big enough to house the people that want to know and taste and see that God is good. And after, after we declared Operation Chaos, we're, we, went, we came up to sing another song and Tammy says, Suzanne, chaos stands for, what is it, Tammy? Um, uh, answer. Oh. And then we stopped on the S. She's like, Suzanne, chaos. God said, Christ has answered our, and she's like, what's the S? And I'm like, silliness? And we were singing another song, and I, our salute, our salute. It's our salute. And so to me, that's yes, sir. Yes, Yes, sir. But I asked Michael, I said, Michael, why do you salute in the army? He said, it is to show respect and acknowledgement of a higher rank acknowledging a higher rank and it's honor 
and respect. Jesus is our king. He is our general. He goes into war with us. He's not a king that sits in this throne and says, you go do. He does it all. But he deserves our salute. He deserves our yes, sir. He deserves our respect and our honor of his higher rank. He deserves our yes. Would a soldier dare to tell his general no? Wouldn't be a soldier very long. And God said plainly Friday night, he just wants our yes, and he will do all of the rest. Which brings me back to today, the Hebrew year 5782. The grace of God, the spirit of God, new beginnings, a faithful witness, and being set apart. And if you add all those together, you get the number 22, which is personal revelation. God wants us to personally understand all of his mysteries. He wants to give us his wisdom, not just knowledge and understanding, but his wisdom. We are going to need supernatural wisdom in the days to come. And today, I believe God is executing. He's giving us his plan of execution for overcoming victory that brings the sprout of new life. We are living in the dawn of the third day ushering in the third stage of God's covenant with man, which is the dispensation of glory. Yes. Glory that ushers in Christ's return. 2,000 yes. years from Adam, Adam's fall to his covenant with Abraham. This is covenant, covenant years. This is the third phase of his covenant. 2,000 years from when Adam fell to when God established his covenant with Abraham. 2,000 years from God's covenant with Abraham to Jesus. 2,000 years from Jesus to his triumphant return. Yes. According to classical Jewish sources, the Hebrew calendar states that the last possible date by which the Messiah must appear is 6,000 years from creation. The last possible date. This marks the initiation of the Messianic age or the return of the Messiah, and we are in the year 5782. <clears throat> um, I'm going to read um, Luke 10, 30 through 35. This is the parable of um, the Samaritan and the innkeeper, the wounded man, uh, Luke 10, 30 through 35. And Jesus answered, saying, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Does that sound like the church? Half dead? Just ask him. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Church want to deal with? And likewise, a Levite, a worshiper, a priest, right? <clears throat> when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. He's a Samaritan. We don't do Samaritans. But a certain Samaritan, well, a certain man, a certain Samaritan, mixed, biracial, half Jewish, half not, Jesus, half Jewish, half God. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Who does this sound like? We get the oil and the wine. And set him on his own beast, and brought him into an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow he departed... He took out two pence, wages for two nights, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I'll repay thee. If it takes me more than two days to come back, it takes me more than two days. Every day with the Lord is a thousand years. I'll pay the rest when I get back. Jesus paid for 2,000 years for him to return for us. If he waits any longer... He will pay the balance upon his return. So if we are in the dawn of the third day, then let's look at what that means. Three means perfect completion. And there are three stages that um, there's, the number three is throughout the Bible. Um, this is my new favorite book, Numbers That Preach. <laughs> um, it's just a compilation of the meaning of, of the numbers in the Bible, scriptural references, what, <clears throat> why they're important. Um, and then there's just a, pages of, of three stages that things go through. Everything to perfect completion has three stages that it goes through. Um, but perfect completion, I like to call the number three the whole enchilada. This number illustrates fullness and being complete. 
Three is resurrection and the number God stamps on divinity. Um, third day glory. Um, yeah, anyway, so there's a few things I wanted to point out here. So we have God, as God, we know him as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're in the age of the Holy Spirit. Um, as man, we know body, soul, and spirit. Um, in the temple, we know the outer court, the inner court, the most holy place. Um, in God's covenant with man, we know the law, grace, and glory. In Moses, we know 40 years as an Egyptian, 40 years as a shepherd, 40 years as a deliverer. Um, in God's covenant with, with man, it was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, the exodus of Israel was Egypt, wilderness, promised land. In Acts 2.22, it's signs, miracles, and wonders. Uh, handiwork of God in 1 Corinthians is gold, silver, and precious stones. In Acts 2.17, it's prophecy, vision, and dreams. So we're going to be having more dreams. We're in, the, we're in the stage of three. We're in the stage of perfection and completion for everything. The harvest, the 30-fold, the 60-fold, the 100-fold. We're in the days of the 100-fold. Yes. The will of God, the good, and the acceptable. We're in the perfect stage. Yes. And how is Jesus seen? The prophet, the priest, and the king. Yes. He is King Jesus. He comes back as King Jesus, the Lion of God. And so as I was looking at this list, it was Friday night, and I actually was just kind of reading this book a little bit, um, and it jumped out to me, Jacob. We've talked a lot about Abraham. Abraham. We've talked a lot about Abraham. We've learned a lot about Abraham. No, we know about Isaac. What is it about Jacob? I haven't heard a lot of teaching. Abraham and Isaac, the covenant was established with Abraham. The son of promise came through Isaac, but it was Jacob that birthed the nation. He birthed the nations. So the Holy Spirit, the most holy place, Jacob, resurrection, death, burial, and resurrection, the glory, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, deliverance. I mean, it just, the promised land, the wonders, the precious stones. It, there's so much in this third stage. So the temple, right? The outer court, the inner court, the most holy place. Leviticus 16.2. Yeah, Leviticus 16.2. Leviticus 16.2. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. And 1 Corinthians 3.16. God moved that mercy seat. Yeah. It's not in a temple, in a building any longer. No. 1 Corinthians 3.16, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? We are the most holy place now. Right. The exodus of Israel, Egypt, the wilderness, the promised land, Joshua 1.13, Joshua 1.13, where they're getting ready to walk across, Joshua is telling him, telling the, the people of Israel, Joshua 1.13. I only got seven pages more, just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm not kidding, but I won't go over all this. <laughs> Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and has given you this land. Yes. The land comes with rest. Yes. The land comes with rest. Yes. The promised land is ours, and the rest is ours. Yes. Yes. Jesus' journey, death, burial, and resurrection, Romans 6, 3 through 5. Romans 6, 3 through 5. So death, burial, and resurrection. Romans 6, 3 through 5. This is the stage of resurrection power being loose. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Yes. The likeness of his resurrection. The manifestation of resurrection life. And Jesus, uh, Jesus told us in John 11, 25 and 26, John 11, 25 and 26, John 11, 25, and 26. 
Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe you this? Do you believe? Do you believe? And we, you know, it, one thing we talked about Friday night, it's the same trick the enemy is, did God say? Did God say? Did God really say that you're never going to die? Yes, he really did. Yes, he did. And the harvest, we were in the time of the hundredfold harvest. We are the good ground that brought forth the fruit some hundredfold. Hundredfold. And in, in, uh, the handiwork of God, silver, gold, and precious stones, look for the colors of the precious stones. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, and precious stones, he has built the foundation. And God's covenant with man in the glory. 2 Corinthians 3.18. 2 Corinthians 3.18, the glory. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And Revelation 21.23, Revelation 21.23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. The glory of God did enlighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. God's glory will fill the earth. And so God's covenant, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it's just really stuck out to me that we refer to God. God refers to himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because those were the three, the perfect three stages of his covenant with man. God took Abram, exalted father, and changed him into the father of multitude, Abraham. Isaac, the child of promise, the son of promise, his name means he laughs. Do we really believe? Are we Sarah sometimes? Really, God? (laughs) Did you really say that? God says, I'm going to do it whether you laugh or not. I'm going to birth it in this earth, whether you laugh, whether you believe, whether you see it or not. I am going to let you still see it, even if you struggle to believe. Jacob comes, the righteous deceiver, the heel holder, the supplanter, the circumventor. He takes by the heel, assail insidiously and overreach. That's who God chose to birth the nations? Yes, because Jacob wouldn't give up until he received his blessing and and he he had his brother's birthright. Israel, I mean, God prevails. Jacob, who contended, who wouldn't stop, became Israel, meaning God prevails, contend, contended with God, persisted, he exerted himself, persevere, mighty strength and power. That's who Jacob became. And from this point forward in the Bible, he always refers to himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, so 12, right? He, had the, he was birthed the 12 tribes, which is God's perfect government. We are in the season of establishing God's perfect government. And so what can we learn from Jacob? We're in the season of Jacob. We need to understand Jacob. And so I want to talk a little bit about who Jacob was and what does God want us to understand about this season that we're in, the season of Jacob birthing God's perfect government into the earth. He was a twin. And he wasn't the firstborn. Do we have a twin that we weren't the firstborn of? I think we do. He was a quiet man that preferred the indoor life, right? Because his brother Esau was the hunter. He was the hunter, and he was his father's favorite, right? But Jacob was his mother's favorite. It says he was a well-rounded man in all things, and he was his mother's favorite. But he stole his brother's birthright. Did he steal it? Did he trick his brother into giving it? Or did he just know his brother? But he got it. A birthright was an honor given to the firstborn, bestowing head of the house, head of the house status and the right to inherit his father's estate. The son was the birthright. The son with the birthright would receive a double portion of whatever was passed down. He got the double portion. Esau gave it up for a bowl of stew. Well, lentils. Stew. He stole his brother's blessing. 
A blessing could be given regardless of birthright. However, a greater blessing was given to the one who held the birthright. We have the birthright. We get the greater blessing because we have the birthright and we have the blessing. We have usurped our brother's blessing, our brother Israel. And God says he's the one. The younger shall rule over the, the older. So who's our Esau? Who's our twin that is willing to give up their birthright for their hunger of what they know, right? For the flesh, I don't, I don't know how you say that, but who is the, who's still their father's favorite? Israel is still his father's favorite uh-huh. and will forever be his father's favorite. But will we, are we willing to really take those blessings? Remember the covenant promise, the land of Israel that comes with the rest the promised seed, the children, the blessing, and and the blessing that everything we touch is blessed. But I think the key and one of the most important things, one of, Jacob saw what they call Jacob's ladder. He saw the gate of heaven as he was running away from his brother's wrath towards his uncle to find a wife. He was in that in-between place. He had left his father's house, he had stole the birthright, he had stole the blessing, and Esau was mad. And his mom's like, and so his dad blessed him and said, you need a wife? Don't take a wife of these women here. These women are driving us crazy. Don't pick one of these. Go back to your mother's homeland and find a wife there. And he's out. Let's go to Genesis 28, 10 through 17. That's a long passage, but... um, Genesis 28, 10 through 17. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took up the stones of that place and put them, and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. What season are we in? Dreams? Dreams. Dreams. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascended, ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, to the four corners. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee. I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of to thee. And Jacob awaked out of, this, out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. It's a place in this season. It's a place in this season. It's a place. I want that, I just want that to like soak in us. It's a place we have to go to. We have to go to the realm of the spirit. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. We are in the season where we have access to the gate of heaven. Those angels going up and down that ladder, they are the reapers for the harvest. We have been told we will judge angels. If they don't bring us our harvest, if they don't do what they were sent to do when we sow the seeds as our harvest and they don't bring them, we judge the angels. Go to the Lord and get our harvest. Go to the Lord and get our harvest and bring it. We are to command our angels. We have been shown the gate of heaven. We have been told how the government of God works. You sow and you reap and you reap a hundredfold in this season. We have got to demand demand and walk in authority. We don't have to demand because we have authority, right? right. But we are sure in our authority. Yes. We are sure that when we speak, it shall be done. Yes. Yes. And right after this, Jacob was deceived. He went to um, Laban's house, fell in love with a daughter. Ooh, I like that one. I want that one. And Laban said, well, how, what, what, what's a fair wage if you're going to work for me? Well, give me Rachel and I'll work seven years. What's another word for wage? Your harvest. Your harvest. But he was tricked because he gave him 
well, we don't do it like that here. We give you the older one. The older one has to marry first. So another seven years. And it was not quite the full, after, the, after he got Rachel, it was not quite a full another seven years before he just got out and left and went back to the promised land. So the wages, he was tricked out of wages. He was tricked out of his harvest. But God, God um, repaid him with the spotted, you know, the whole story with the spotted uh, lambs and goats and all that stuff. Um, and it was during all of this nonsense, you have two sisters now, right? Two sisters. We have twins and we have two sisters. We had two wives. Leah gave him six sons. Rachel gave him two. And in their competition to see who could get him the most children, <laughs> their handmaids gave him two each. And so we have Leah gave him six sons. Reuben means behold a son. Simeon heard. Levi joined to Judah praised Issachar. There is a recompense and Zebulun exalted. Rachel gave him two sons, his last two sons, uh, Joseph, which means Jehovah has added, and Benjamin means son of the right hand. And Rachel's handmaid gave him two sons, Dan, which means a judge, Nef Neftali, which means wrestling. Leah's handmaid gave him two sons, uh, Gad, which means troops, and Asher, which means happy. So if you put all of Jacob's lineage in their birth order, it says this, Behold a son heard, joined praise, and judged, wrestling troops, happy, there is a recompense, exalted, Jehovah has added the son of the right hand. Now that's a little clunky, but if you just take what that really means, yeah. behold a son has heard and has joined in praise and is judging the wrestling troops yeah. who are happy that there is a recompense that the exalted Jehovah has added the son of the right hand. Yes. What did the Lord say? From his right hand to my right hand to your right hand. Yes. It's the right hand of God, the authority and the seat of power. Yes. That's what he birthed into this name. That's what he birthed into this world. That is what we are called to birth into this season. The right hand of God, because we have heard and we have joined and we have praised and we are judging and we are wrestling and we are the troops yes. and we are happy and we are recomp recompensed, we are exalted, and Jehovah has added us as the sons of his yes. right hand. Yes. And it wasn't very long after that that Jacob wrestled with God and with man. Genesis 32, verses 24 through 30. This is a longer passage, but this is a really important one. Genesis 32, verses 24 through 30. And Jacob, oh, sorry, is that right? 24 through 30, yeah, okay. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with, so okay, so let's set this up. So we're at the point where Jacob um, is going back. He's taken all, he's reconciled with Laban. They worked it all out. They came to, they blessed each other, went on their separate ways. He took all of his wealth. And he was going back, and he was afraid Esau was going to be mad. <laughs> and he was afraid Esau was going to be really mad. And so he's on his way back, and they're like, oh, Esau's coming with 400 men. And he's like, oh, okay, um, I have, like, children and nursemaids and sheep and cattle. So he's, like, dividing things up. He's trying to, like, prepare in case Esau's really mad. Well, if I split him in half, then if he slays one camp, at least I'll have the other camp. He's, he doesn't know what's going to happen. Yeah. He doesn't know. We don't know what's going to happen. But... He goes, and so he, and so he sets everybody aside, and he goes because he knows he needs to be alone. He knows he needs to have a minute alone, right? I think this is a really wise, this is some wisdom we can pick up from Jacob. He left his camp, moved them, and he went back alone. And this is where Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he, when, he, when the angel saw that he had not prevailed against Jacob, he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. He pushed it out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. How many of you know lions are nocturnal? Lions hunt at night. So when you get woken up in the night, hunt. You're being woken up in the middle of the night to hunt or to wrestle. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. I got to go. I can't be here when the sun rises. I'm not, I, I only work at night. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. Wow. Jacob was hungry for the blessing. Yes. He wanted the blessing. He yes. was not going to give up till he got the blessing. Right. And he said unto him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, no. Do you think he didn't know his name? 
He said, who do you say you are? I say I'm the heel grabber. I say I'm the supplanter, the trickster. He said, no, no. From this day forward, your name shall be called no more Jacob, trickster, supplanter, heel grabber, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men. You're a prince now. I have established you not as a supplanter, not as a wannabe, not as you know a trickster that I got it through nefarious means. You are a prince in the kingdom of God. Church, you are a prince yes. in the kingdom of God. Yes. And you have power with God and with men. Yes. And you have prevailed. Yes. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost offer after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. We are in the season where God wants to see us face yes. to face. Yes. Face to face. Yes. I'm telling you, when I was praying, when we first started singing the first song Friday night, I saw Jesus descend in a cloud of glory, and he himself was here. And when he lifted his hands, we, and we were singing that song, um, Here I Am to Worship, and it says, I'll never know the cost of what it was to see you upon that cross. Right. He went like this. And I knew the cost. Yeah. We know the price he paid. We know the cost. Yes. So after this, what did Jacob do? Jacob reconciled with his brother. Church, we have to be ready to reconcile with our brother, Israel. God's favorite. His father's favorite. And they hugged and they, they embraced each other with tears because it had been so long since they'd seen each other. And then the next thing he did... Before he entered into his promise, Jacob purged his household of all the strange gods. He went through and he said, everybody in my camp, if you've got anything, get it out. Idols, strange gods. And they purified himself and the, the whole camp. And they returned to Bethel where God blessed him again. So this is Genesis 35 verse 4. This is me throwing out my Nike t-shirt in the middle of the night because God said, get rid of it. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'll do it in the morning. He says, no, throw it out. And I'm like, I'll, in the morning, I'm tired. Like, I'm in bed. It's like 2 in the morning. He's like, I said, do it now. So I got up and threw it in the garage. Because, I, <laughs> I mean, when God says to do something, when he says to get that out of your house, you get it out of your house. And he means now, not like when you feel like it. And then gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. Okay, and then let's go to 35, 9 through 13. Genesis 35, 9 through 13. And the next thing he did after he purged all the crap, all the idols, all the things that represented something that wasn't of the kingdom of God, and he went back to Bethel, the place where God dwells. He talked, Jacob, Israel, talked to God face to face. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padanamaram, that, and blessed him. <laughs> I'm so tired, I can't speak this morning, I'm so sorry. And God said unto them, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in that place where he talked with him. He wants us to be fruitful and multiply. He wants to give us the land and the rest. And he wants us to talk to him face to face so he can remind us of who we are. Right. Who we are. We are Christ Jesus. We are the body of Christ. We're the bride of Christ in this earth. There is so much that we need to understand. We are called to rule and to reign in Christ. And I don't see much ruling and I don't see much reigning in the church and the, and the bride. We are supposed to talk to God face to face. We are supposed to know that we hear God, that we see God, that angels aren't unusual things or occurrences to have conversations or wrestle with angels. He wasn't, it was not an unusual thing. We're supposed to command the angels going to and from 
earth to heaven to bring the harvest. So we are in the last days. And I want to read from Isaiah 2, uh, 1 through 5, but I'm going to read it. Oh, I didn't bring my Passion Bible up here. Um, I think I have it in here. Um, I want to read Isaiah 2 from the Passion Translation. It says, The mountain of the Lord's temple. This is the word revealed to Isaiah, son of Amos, concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of Yahweh's temple will be raised up. A mountain. Will be raised up as the head of the mountains, towering over all the hills. So there's mountains, and then there's the head mountain. And when, when God took Abraham, he said, go to the highest mountain in this area that I'm going to show you. It's the highest mountain. God is raising up as the head of the mountains, towering over all the hills. A sparkling stream of every nations will flow into it. Many people will come and say, everyone come, let's go up higher to Yahweh's mountain, to the house of Jacob's God. Then he can teach us his ways and we can walk in his paths. What an interesting translation of that. Let's go up higher to Yahweh's mountain, to the house of Jacob's God. Because Jacob birthed the nations. Abraham and Isaac were promised, but Jacob birthed the nations. Let's go up, and he can teach us his ways, and we can walk in his paths. We have to understand God's ways. We have to understand the government, the kingdom, ways, and how we establish it in this world. Zion will be the center of instruction. It's a place that we can go in the spirit. Zion will be the center of instruction, and the word of Yahweh will go out from Jerusalem. He will judge fairly between the nations and settle disputes among many peoples. They will beat the swords that they used against each other into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. I revel the day. We don't need weapons of destruction anymore and can just have weapons to feed one another. No nation will take up weapons against another, nor will they prepare for war anymore. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the wonderful light of Yahweh. That is what God is saying to us. Come walk in my light. So in these last days, we must learn to operate together as a church in the spirit and in the truth. John 4, 23 through 24. John 4, 23 through 24. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the fathers seek such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in truth. It's a place, not a prayer language, not a, a ritual or the way we do things. It's a place. We need, when we go to worship, and, and here's the thing. I heard a teaching. Uh, I know Tammy knows what I'm talking about. We know how to access the spirit individually. We know how to, to go into the realm of the spirit individually, but how do we do it as a church? We're going to have to war together. We're going to have to see each other in the spirit. Yeah. I'm going to have to see you in the spirit. I'm going to have to see you in the spirit. And we're going to have to be able to talk to each other in the spirit and see the same things so we can surround and accomplish the works. We all have eyes to see. It's not, it's not a special gift. for like, there, are, there are seers. There are prophets. There are the office of prophets. But everybody has been told to prophesy, which means you see in the spirit and you speak the truth of God into the realm of the spirit. Because in this natural world, the, the kingdom of God has to be released. Yes. It's not here anymore. It has to be released from us. It, is, it, was, it, was, it was cut off when Adam fell. We were cut off from the kingdom of God. The only way the kingdom of God can come is through us establishing it. And how do we do that? In the spirit and in the truth. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we, this is where we go. This is the place we go to fight our battles. And we speak it into this natural world, yes, but with the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. How many years have we prayed that prayer? The eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Lord, give us eyes of our understanding to be enlightened by the things of the spirit realm. To walk first in the spirit realm. To carry the spirit realm. The glory is in the spirit realm that we release the rivers of living water that flow from us is from the realm of the spirit into the natural world. That is how we warfare. And that is how the kingdom of God and the glory will cover the whole earth. It is a place, not a language. 
We must have spiritual eyes to see and spiritual ears to hear as the Spirit moves. We don't have to have a special calling. We don't have to have a special gift. We are all spirit beings first. When you are born again, you are born into the spirit realm. Your spirit will never die. And in the spirit, that is how we fight our battles, with the word of truth. We have to be in the truth, and the truth has to be in us. I am in the word, and the word is in me. I am. I become the living word, the rhema living word. That is the third stage of the word of God, is the living word of God. The living word of God. So we need to be so hungry and so thirsty for the word of God to eat the flesh, to drink the blood, to, to get this truth in us so much that it's the first thing we think about when we wake up and it's the last thing we think about when we go to sleep and it's everything in between. We need to learn how to warfare in the spirit to see the enemies that we are fighting. Remember, it's principalities, it's powers, it's rulers of darkness in this world, and it's spiritual wickedness in high places, and we have authority over them all. Over them all. Over them all. We are called to birth the kingdom of God. To birth the perfect kingdom, the perfect government of God into this earth so he can come back to rule and to reign for a thousand years. So my prayer, Lord, open our eyes, open our ears, open all of our senses to the realm of your spirit. We can smell the incense of your Holy Spirit. We can feel the weight of your glory. Holy Spirit, teach us to warfare for the kingdom of God in the realm of the spirit. Teach us how to bring heaven to earth through the rules of engagement in the government of God. Give us supernatural wisdom. Give us supernatural boldness and fearlessness to stand and fight for your people. This world is dark and full of terror, but even those in this church are not living in the fullness that you have provided. I am not living in the fullness that you have set aside for such a time as this. We want it all, Lord. We want it all. We say yes to you. Lead us and guide us, oh God. We say yes to you. We salute you in Jesus' name. And I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to pray Ephesians. We've, we've, we've prayed this prayer so many times, but Ephesians 1, 16 through 23. We know it, but we need to live it. Ephesians 1, 16, thank you. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. We need to pray for each other, be thankful for each other, be thankful for our pastor that teaches us and gives us the good word. Thank the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Wisdom, Lord, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, light us up from the spirit inside out, Lord that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints, that we may understand your glory, Lord, and our role in releasing your glory. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? which he wrought in Christ, openly manifested in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, the resurrection that we are going to walk in, yes. and set him at his own right hand. We are in the season of the right hand, yes. in heavenly places, the places that we're going to live and walk and move and speak from, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world which is to come. That is our prayer, Lord. That is our desire, and that is what we decree, and we ask, and we receive, and we speak it forth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, so the Lord says, anybody that wants their eyes opened to come, and we will lay hands on you, and we will pray that God opens your eyes to the supernatural realm, and that you will begin to operate and understand in a newness of life and boldness in the supernatural. So let's, so with that, all right. So that is the word of the Lord. And let's, anybody that wants, uh, Michael, if you want to just put on a song or something and 
Anybody that wants hands laid on them, we don't ever want to have a service anymore where we don't have the opportunity for actual ministry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>